I'll reveal the top five solving secrets from a three-time Sudoku world champion who identified this particular puzzle as the key to his success. And with that, it's solving time. So secret number one, you want to scan quickly for combinations. You might notice this 129 cuts across row three. You have a 378 right here. So where are the only three places to put the 129? It has to be in these three cells. So that's called a hidden pair. And since you have two ones here, this has to be your one. And with this two, this would be your two, and that would be your nine. Greetings, friend. Thomas Snyder is a three-time Sudoku world champion, and he was one of the featured speakers at SudokuCon 2025. And so was yours truly. I enjoyed meeting and listening to Thomas. He said that studying this Sudoku from the 2005 World Puzzle Championship was the key to his championship success. And I'll show you five secrets that he shared in his presentation that'll help you solve Sudoku faster. But before I move on to the next solve, I want to hear from you. Have you ever solved the same Sudoku more than one time? Please, please, please share in the comments and let me and the other viewers know why and what you learned from doing that. Help me grow the internet's best Sudoku community. So after solving this combination, you look and see there's nothing else we can do with the one. So you want to work sequentially down through the twos all the way to the nines. So if you look at these twos, you may notice that with this two, and this two, you can solve for two in block four. And then with these twos, solve for two in block seven. And then with these twos and this two, you only have two places to put a two in block nine. And so Thomas did do marking back then. And you want to mark any time you have two possibilities for a cannon in a three by three block. Also notice with these twos, two twos up here in block two. Nothing else with the twos. If you look at the threes with these two threes and this three, you can solve for three here in block one. Solve for threes there in block two. And then with these threes and this three, solve for threes here in block six. And then with these threes, you can solve for threes here in block eight. And this brings me up to secret number two, because this is quite hard to spot but uh, I'm going to give you an even better tip in secret number three I'm going to share a bombshell that Thomas dropped at the conference I couldn't believe he said this but secret number two is all about claiming pairs you have to notice that the threes are restricted in columns five and six in blocks two and eight so three can be in these spots right so a three can be there and there or there and there in those two blocks so what that means is a three in this column has to be in block five right because it can't be in block two or block eight and since you have a three right there you know that three has got to be in one of these two spots so this is a claiming pair you have to find this because you got to build some restriction in this block, block five, the key to the whole puzzle, as Thomas said in his talk, because there's nothing, no digits there. So you have to find ways to restrict the cannons that go in that block. And in fact, other contestants gave up on this puzzle. And they took a time penalty or they spent well over 10 minutes. I'm going to show you how to do this so much quicker. Nothing else you can do with the threes. Move on to the fours, and you'll see with this four cutting across, you have a pointing pair of fours in block four. Since the fours have to be in the same column, can't be anywhere else outside that block or you have no fours in block four. So what that does is it removes fours from here. With this four cutting across, you can solve for a four now in block seven. And then with these fours and this four, two fours in block nine. Okay, let's move on to the fives. With this five, and the five in row four, you can solve for a five in block six. And with these two fives, solve for a five right there in block three. Nothing else with the fives. 
move on to the sixes with this six cutting down. This six cutting across. Pointing pair of sixes in block nine. Restricts the sixes of these two spots in block eight. And then if you move on to the sevens, there's nothing else with the sixes. You might see with these two sevens, you could have solved this cell for seven right at the beginning. It's right there. And this moves me up to tip number three. This is something that Snyder did very well, and it's spotting hidden pairs. Notice where a seven can be here in block nine. Six and seven are both in the same row, and six and seven are both in the same column. So that puts a seven in the same places as the sixes. Since these two candidates are in the same two cells, they can't be anywhere else in the block, Nothing else can be in that block. This is a 6-7 hidden pair. Using this notation, you can find that. Now, here's the bombshell. This is crazy. This is what Thomas told us at the conference. Most people will refer to this type of marking as Snyder notation. Thomas said he did not invent Snyder notation. In fact, the marking he did was similar to this, but not quite exact uh, and so legalistic as what I would show and call a Snyder or what Kraken the Cryptic does on their channel. And so I no longer call this Snyder notation because Thomas said it's really not that. But this type of marking and notation is helpful for solving these puzzles. In this seven and these sevens, means this cell can be a seven in block seven. And then with these two sevens, you can solve for seven in block four. And then with this seven and these sevens, Two places for seven in block five. And notice we did another set of marks in block five. You gotta watch block five if you wanna solve this puzzle fast. Move on to the eights. With these two eights, only one place for an eight in block one. And then with these two eights, the eights overlap the three, so you got a nice three eight hidden pair here in block two, which restricts us as a four six naked pair in block row three there in block three as well. What else can you do with the eights? With this eight coming down, you have two places for an eight in block seven. Okay, move on to the nines. You might notice with these two nines, since you have this hidden pair here, you can actually solve this for a nine. And what that does is it actually displaces this two and you can solve for two right here. Something else Thomas revealed when he does his marks, he doesn't write two twos like this. Instead, he writes it with a pencil because that's what you have to use in Sudoku Championships. He writes the two right here between the two cells. And he writes it lightly when he's doing the marking so that when he does the solves, he puts a nine there. He can write a two right there. He'll put that very dark because then the judges can look and see that he meant a nine here and a two there. And he doesn't erase. And he says, you know, erasing just is going to waste time. So I thought that was very interesting, a way to do your pencil solving a little bit faster. And now by doing that with this two, you got some twos here. And then finishing up the nines with this nine and these nines, you got nines up here. So that's kind of one look through going through the digits one through nine. So a bonus tip, you want to go back through here. And I'm actually about to take you to the spot where those world champion contenders all got stuck, but Thomas did not. And he studied this puzzle multiple times afterward. Look here in column one. You'll notice you have a heavy house. So you want to start looking at those rows, columns, or blocks that have at least five or more digits filled out. In this case, you got six digits filled out. This is a heavy house. What you have remains a one, four, and a nine in column one. You'll see the 1 and the 9 right there, and the 1 repeated, you can solve all four cells. That's your 4. This is the only place the 9 can be, and this has to be your 1. Then you can remove the 9 from right there, and you'll notice now you just have a 5 and a 6 remaining in column 2. Because of 6 right here, that's going to be your 5, that's going to be your 6. Now you have a full house. That's when you have 8 of 9 digits filled out. In this block, that has to be your 5. You got a 2, 4 right there with this 4. That's going to be your 4 displacing that 2. You see how quickly you can make these solves when you notice these types of combinations. Come down here. This is just a 1, 8. We're going to fill it out. You cannot solve that just yet. And right here, you'd have a 
5 and a 6. You do need to fill that out. What else can we notice? You might see that with these sixes now, it brings us back to that great secret number two. You got a six here and here and here and here. And this is a spot that Thomas thinks the other contenders just didn't see. Because you have this relationship with the sixes in columns five, four and five, where can a six be here in block five? Has to be in column six because you have a six right there. This is another claiming pair. And you notice we've added another set of marks here in block five. Now it brings me up to secret number four. Secret number four is you want to evaluate the markings. You want to see what information it's giving you as far as restrictions in the other cells in that house. You want to notice all these marks in block five. We're about to make a couple more. Notice there's this one coming down pointing pair of ones in block six. And with this one and the one right here, now you have ones in block five, just added more marks. And then with the fours, with these fours and this four, you can mark fours here in block five. And Thomas said, this is the most marks he can remember seeing in a block ever in a Sudoku. And this is where the other contenders got stuck because they weren't using the marks the way Thomas did. You have to see what's happening right here. And you want to look at is actually which cells are empty in this block. This one's empty and this one's empty. This is the one you want to notice because it has more digits in the column looking at the cell. What can this be now? You might notice that it can't be a one because the ones are here. Can't be a two because of this two. Can't be a three because of these threes. Fours are here. Can't be a five because of that five. Sixes are here, can't be the sixes, sevens are here, and a nine is right there. This has to be a naked single eight. If you got stuck, you probably didn't see this eight. you got to find it. This is the key cell. So when Thomas was studying puzzles, he studied puzzles like this and studied this one over and over to find these types of claiming pairs, pointing pairs, and marks so that he could find the naked single like this that you needed to move further. And all these strategies that I showed you and that Thomas studied, they can be found in my free Sudoku solving guide. And this brings me up to secret number five. And this is something Thomas not only harped on during his presentation, but I'd be glad to know he talked about it, that I mentioned it in my Sudoku videos. He actually mentioned Smart Hobbies. Thank you so much, Thomas. Again, I learned so much from you about solving. It's something I've mentioned in my channel before. And what Thomas was saying was, you want to look at the impact on row, column, and block and go back to your major solve points to see what else you can solve. You don't want to just make a solve, start following where it goes, and end up somewhere else in the grid. Instead, go back to that major solve point. So we're, that's what we're going to do with these eights. With these two eights, you can solve for an eight right there, displacing this three. Okay, and then with these eights, you can solve for an eight right here. And that will give you a nice one six right there. Now, if you stay down here, you might get stuck a little bit longer than you need to be. So what you can do is go back up into block six here and notice the impact here across the row. What's left here? You got a two, three, four, five, six, eight. You need a one, seven, and a nine. Because this seven, nine right there, that's got to be your one. The nine repeated. Here's your nine, here's your seven. And now bring that back here to the block, right? Because of this seven, that can't be a seven. Displaces this seven, displaces this one, displaces that three. And now you're starting to fill up the hardest block in the puzzle, block five. Restricts what can be in row five now. You just can have a four and a nine. Since the nine's right here, this is the four, this is the nine, displacing that four. You've got to find this. This is what Thomas was talking about. And you can use this to create some more solves, right? Only thing missing in block four is a six. You can displace that six and solve this for a six. You got a nice full house coming across here. So that's got to be your two. Displace this two. Solve this cell for two. You see how that works? And then what you have here is, looks like a five and a nine with this nine. There's your nine and there's your five. Okay. And 
now you want to look at the one and go there's a six there's going to be a one right there now you can disambiguate the five six here especially if you remember that they were part of pairs of that claiming pair you can make that solve a little bit quicker and then you can go down here and go okay i got to make a lot more solves down here well this seven that's your six that's your seven okay and then with the six here's your four here's your six and then you'll notice that one of these is a four and that has to be a one disambiguate the eight and the one right there full house there also if you notice you left that eight this has to be your eight disambiguate the three and the eight here easy solve since you just did the three is to put the three there and our last digit is a five now apply the five championship secrets you just learned to this puzzle from the sudoku grand prix thank you so much for watching